The title of this morning's message is Worship Priorities. The last time we were together, our message was entitled Beware of the Beasts. We discovered how there are two beasts uh, that really exist in our world, uh, one being the might of imperialism, the other being the misinformation of imperialism, and uh, how they really are, are, are two realities that the Christians need to be aware of in, in the journey of faith and witness for Jesus Christ. And uh, when we think of these two beasts, it is really a picture of all that can go wrong with empire, with trusting in culture and the world order. By using its might and its meanings, or misinformation, to allure and overwhelm the world, both of these beasts demand worship, or else the result would be death. Jesus warns us to exercise patient endurance, faithfulness, and wisdom in light of these two beasts. In our study of Revelation 14 today, we are told why this is so important. Let's look at the text today. The words will be on the screen. This is the word of God, and it says this. Then I saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of mighty ocean waves or the rolling of loud thunder. It was like the sound of many harpists playing together. This great choir sang a wonderful new song in front of the throne of God and before the four living beings and the 24 elders. No one could learn this song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. They have kept themselves as pure as virgins, following the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been purchased from among the people on the earth as a special offering to God and to the Lamb. They have told no lies. They are without blame. And I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Fear God, he shouted. Give glory to him. For the time has come when he will sit as judge. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all the springs of water. Then another angel followed him through the sky, shouting, Babylon is fallen, that great city is fallen, because she made all the nations of the world drink the wine of her passionate immorality. Then a third angel followed them, shouting, Anyone who worships the beast and his statue, or who accepts his mark on the forehead or on the hand, must drink the wine of God's anger. It has been poured full strength into God's cup of wrath, and they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. The smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever, and they will have no relief day or night, for they have worshipped the beast and his statue and have accepted the mark of his name. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and man maintaining their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their good deeds follow them. Then I saw a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was someone like the Son of Man. He had a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came from the temple and shouted to the one sitting on the cloud, Swing the sickle, for the time of harvest has come, the crop on earth is ripe. So the one sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the whole earth was harvested. 
After that, another angel came from the temple in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel, who had power to destroy with fire, came from the altar. He shouted to the angel with the sharp sickle, Swing your sickle now to gather the clusters of grapes from the vines of the earth, for they are ripe for judgment. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and loaded the grapes into the great winepress of God's wrath. The grapes were trampled in the winepress outside the city. The blood flowed from the winepress in a stream about 180 miles long and as high as a horse's brittle. May God bless the reading of his word today. Let's take a moment and pray together. Father God, we thank you for the word uh, that we just uh, had read. Lord, we pray that we would receive its truth, its wisdom, and its revelation to us today. We ask that your Holy Spirit would impress it upon our hearts, Lord. And we just pray that your word would transform us, even as Jesus Christ is King and Savior of our hearts. For we pray this in his name. Amen. We will spend uh, the rest of our time today examining our priorities around worship. We will be studying the reasons behind worshiping Jesus over empire. The first reason we should worship Jesus over empire is this. There is a wonderful alternative to worshiping the beasts. The vision in Revelation 14, 1-5 is the alternative to the vision of the two beasts. Instead of a beast, we have the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. He loves his people, has their best interest in store, and has saved them by the shedding of his own blood. He does not overwhelm people by his might or seduce them through deception. Rather, he is our Savior King, completely righteous and true. The mention of Mount Zion is also a wonderful alternative to empire. Mount Zion is the promised place where God will dwell with his people, protect them, and bless them with true peace. Scripture calls this place, My delight is in her, in Isaiah 62.4. A city not forsaken, in Isaiah 62.12. The throne of the Lord, in Jeremiah 3.17. The Lord is our righteousness, in Jeremiah 33.16. And the Lord is there, in Ezekiel 48.16. The empire makes claims to providing protection and plenty to those who worship her, but God promises to dwell with his people at Mount Zion, the true picture of protection and plenty. As we mentioned in an earlier message, the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation is indicative of God's holy people in her entirety. Also, the forced, joyless worship of empire is a stark reality compared to the wonder of the worship offered to God and to the Lamb. The worship of God and the Lamb involves heaven and earth. It involves a wonderful new song. It involves loving devotion that is pure in its commitment. It involves lives purchased from the peoples of the earth as a special offering to God, and it involves a blamelessness that is devoid of falsehood. There is something sacred and beautiful about those who worship God and the Lamb. Those who are sealed by God are as pure as virgins. They have kept themselves from the spiritual adultery of compromise and idolatry. In this sense, there is a quality to our worship that is pristine and sacred. We do not produce the purity ourselves. It is as we live as God's sealed people that this purity 
is experienced. It is a purity given to us by Jesus. There is something wonderful about the worship of God and the Lamb. It is what we were created for. As image bearers of God, there is something woven into the fabric of our humanness that is meant to worship God. Revelation 14 verse 4 gives us an antidote to the poison of false worship. We are pure in our worship of Jesus because we follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Are you a follower of Jesus today? This is more than belief and more than sentiment. A follower of Jesus is constantly in His presence, being shepherded by Him and being servants of Him. Is that part of how you understand worship? Is that the way in which you follow Jesus today? This truly is a wonderful alternative to worshiping the beasts. The second reason we should worship Jesus over empire is this. The consequences for worshiping Jesus is physical death from empire, but the consequences of worshiping empire is eternal death from Jesus. Worship always costs us something. Last week, Revelation 13, 7 uh, told us that the first beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. Revelation 13, 15 tells us that the second beast commanded that anyone refusing to worship it must die. The consequences for worshiping Jesus are real. Persecution is the outcome of pledging allegiance to Jesus in the face of empire. In many parts of the world right now, such a faith decision results in physical death. We may be wary of worshiping Jesus because of these consequences, but we can be sure of this. The alternative consequences are much more dire. Three angels are sent out in the text. The first angel, or messenger, is symbolic of the ones who carry forth the message of the gospel to the world. The second angel announces the fall of empire, symbolic in the, in the empire Babylon. And the third angel proclaims the judgment of all who worship the beast. Tim Chester describes this judgment in this way. The contrast is stark. Either the state kills you for not worshiping the beast, or God kills you for worshiping the beast. Is not this evaluation harsh? Will God really kill his enemies? Revelation 14.8 gives us insight into the answer to these questions. It tells us that those who worship empire drink the wine of her passionate immorality. This describes a form of broken worship that involves their whole being. Their thoughts, passions, desires and choices were all devoted wholeheartedly to immorality. Because this is so, G.K. Beale states the following, Therefore, since the nations have willingly drunk from the wine of passion for Babylon, so they will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, in demonstration of the eye for an eye principle. The picture of pouring out wine resulting in intoxication indicates the unleashing of God's wrath, under which people are completely subjugated through judgment, resulting in extreme suffering. While the intoxicating effect of Babylon's wine seems strong, it is nothing in comparison to God's wine, end quote. 
We do not determine morality for ourselves. Rather, it is what we worship that shapes morality for us. And when people worship empire, they lose sight of who they are as created in the image of God for the worship of God. Therefore, they break his commands and his heart by searing their consciences and avoiding his desires at every turn. The alternative for the Christ follower is declared in Revelation 14, 13, where it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their good deeds will follow them. How does this encourage your faith and your witness for Jesus? How does it give you perspective today? Another question. Perhaps you are not following Jesus Christ. Perhaps you have tuned into this video in order to um, just seek out who Jesus might be. Um, perhaps you're wondering about what's going to happen in the end. And you hear this text and you realize that you do not know Jesus Christ. Perhaps you do recognize that you worship what the world has to offer. And uh, you're passionate about it. May, may I encourage you, may I urge you in the Lord to turn to Him today. To ask Him to save you, to be your King. To be the one who seals you for eternity. May May you recognize that he loves you enough to die for you on the cross. And may you recognize that your sins can only be forgiven and you can only be free by a faith relationship in Jesus Christ. The third reason we should worship Jesus over empire is this. The source of our worship determines the kind of harvest we will experience. Our text today describes two kinds of harvest. There is a vision of one like a son of man, seated on a cloud with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. A sickle is a reaping hook used to help with the harvest, and the one like a son of man is Jesus Christ. The first harvest gathers a ripe crop from the earth and the whole earth is harvested. This is a picture of how everyone will stand before King Jesus one day. No one will be exempt. This is a repeated theme throughout Scripture. An example of this is Philippians 2.10, which says this, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee, every tongue. The second harvest is one of grapes, and it is mentioned in the prophets as judgment. Wine is oftentimes associated with blood in Scripture. This is a picture of divine judgment and wrath against all those who are sealed by the beasts instead of by God. The depth of the blood from the crushing blow of God's wrath and judgment signifies a thoroughly complete judgment of the world. Throughout the book of Revelation, the people of God are called to endure patiently and be faithful. The reason is that God is sovereign and he will judge the earth at the end of history. Of that we can be sure. And this is such a picture in Revelation 14. God displays his justice towards those who remain faithful to him. The theme of harvest is important. Jesus tells a parable about a harvest in Matthew 13, 24 to 30. And that text of scripture says this. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. 
But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. During our present time in history, there are two types of people growing together. Some people are producing a crop that is pleasing to God. Such people will be gathered and taken to a safe place with God. They are like wheat, a valuable commodity to its farmer and owner. Some other people, however, are weeds. They will be collected for the sake of being burned. They have sought to destroy what was valuable and precious to the farmer and owner of the wheat. God's judgment is just and right, but he is also a God of love. The first angel in Revelation 14 presents the gospel to the world. God has sent Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, heal us from our pride, and give us his righteousness by faith. God promises that those who believe in Jesus will receive new hearts, the Spirit of God, and the mind of Christ. Before judgment comes, the gospel, the good news, goes out. And that good news says that God is faithful and just to save the world because he loves the world. There is transformation for those who receive Jesus. Personal transformation, yes, but a transformation in the eyes of God where we move from his enemies to his friends. But for those who remain in their idolatry and deception, God will judge them for their rebellion. What about you today? Where do you stand before God? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this, your word. And God, we stand amazed at the beauty and the sacred wonder of what it means to worship you. We acknowledge, Lord, that following you in this life is hard. It is difficult. And at times, Lord, we want to avoid persecution. And yet we are confident from your word and encouraged by it, Lord, that uh, the consequences for following you now are much less dire than the consequences of what it means to not live for you now and face you later. God, please help us to be faithful and to endure patiently. And Lord, we also recognize the image of harvest. And Lord, we want to be harvested at the end of time for your glory, to be with you forever as your people, not to be uh, thrown aside like weeds and burned. And Lord, whoever is listening to this uh, message today, may they understand the importance of walking with you. We pray this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. A word of benediction today. May the grace of the Lord and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.